Good evening, everyone. Um, we'll call the meeting to order. This is the Pioneer Valley Regional School District School Committee, um, the public hearing. Today's Thursday, <clears throat> excuse me, today is Tuesday, February 9th at 7 p.m. We're holding this meeting via Google Meet in accordance with the governor of Massachusetts March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. This meeting is being streamed live um, and can be viewed on www.bnctv.net Facebook. Um, I want to apologize to everyone in advance. I'm having some uh, technical issues this evening with our Wi-Fi, so I'm not able to run my video and my audio at the same time, else it freezes and kicks me off of the system. Um, so I do apologize in advance. Um, as we move through this evening's presentation, um, we would ask that anyone who may have questions wait until the end of the presentation and then um, there is time at the end where Tanya is available to answer any questions that anyone may have and um, I'll turn it over to John and Tanya. Okay hello everyone uh, thanks for joining us for our public hearing. Tanya and I put together a PowerPoint presentation um, we're going to show you tonight on the proposed FY22 uh, budget like Kristen said, if you're okay, um, noting your questions along the way and then just waiting to the end to ask them, um, that would be great. So I'll turn it over to Tanya and uh, we'll begin. Thank you. Tanya, before you begin, I'd just like to remind folks that if you are um, not on mute, to please mute yourselves. Um, I'm getting some feedback. And also when folks have questions, if people can use the raise hand button and I'll do my best to um, call everybody as quickly as possible. So thank you so much. Okay, welcome everybody. <clears throat> um, I do apologize, I can't see you guys because I have my screen up. So um, if you have questions or whatever, like Kristen said, just <clears throat> wait until the Q&A section and she will address those. Tonight is February 9th, 2021. And then this is the public hearing to present our FY22 budget overview to the public. Just a quick overview of where we started with this FY22 budget. It's obviously been a pretty interesting year, but our general fund surplus, we have pending certification for our excess and deficiency of $724,571. Our food service fund closed with a zero balance <clears throat> with the general fund subsidizing that in FY20 due to the school closures of $50,321. Our circuit breaker ended with a surplus of $96,896. And our school choice had a surplus of $454,220. In addition to that, we have multiple other grants and special donations, user fees and gate fees. And cumulatively, those had balances of $213,741. That is a little higher than we typically would have the reason for that being is simply because we had FY20 grants that we were allowed to roll over due to school closures and not being able to expend those um, <clears throat> on the things that they would have typically been spent on when the schools were open. A quick overview of our FY21 budget. The originally voted budget was $14,889,860. Sorry, that's supposed to be a zero. Um, that had $28,000 in capital in that. We amended it last summer to $14,356,936. We eliminated capital and it was an overall reduction to the towns of $436,720. And this was to assist the towns with their assessments due to the concerns surrounding COVID's impact on their FY21 unrestricted government aid. Some of those cuts were actual staff and efficiencies made within the schools that were one time and some were funds that we were able to create with excess revenues through mass general law in order to be able to give that one time offset to our towns. Um, <clears throat> we also made again like I just mentioned we were made revisions to that FY20 budget to help with the FY21. One of the largest changes we made was setting up the regional transportation reimbursement fund which was $171,000 we were able to carry forward and offset this year's budget with. And we revised our amount of school choice funds that we used 
which resulted in a decrease of expenses um, and the increase in our school choice fund that we now have of $454,000. And last year we merged Warwick Elementary School with Northfield. Some of the challenges we still continue to face are declining enrollments. Our enrollment decreased a total of 72 students from FY20 to FY21. The, um, a portion of that, as we know, has to do with some folks homeschooling due to our current situation. And we're hoping to see some of those folks come back next year. Our towns are continuously requesting level funded budgets. So we continue to have that challenge of meeting the education needs as well as being sensitive to the financial needs of our member towns. DOR has mandates on us and sometimes those create financial issues for us. And of course, making budget cuts while sustaining quality programs for our students. In addition, we typically lose a good number of our ninth grade students out to our technical programs that we have in the area. This is just a quick overview of our enrollment for the last decade. As you can see, we've lost a total of 455 students since 2012. Our budget process is very similar to what we had last year. We worked with the superintendent, school principals, and our other administrative staff to complete all the sections of the budget. We did start the budget process itself with the facilities, technology, and some of the other department heads back in late October and early November. As a team, we started meeting in December to discuss the FY22 budget as a whole. Um, once the FY22 governor's proposed budget was available, we were able to finalize our revenue budgets at our last meeting on January 28th. We did make some adjustments to our choice and charter numbers based on trends and current enrollments as well. The principals and department heads worked to create supply budgets after getting input from their staff. And the budget subcommittee itself started meeting weekly after the new committee members were selected and the chair was appointed. We started those meetings on December 16th. Myself, <clears throat> John, and the administrative and department staff attended those meetings regarding their sections pertaining to their departments and schools. We also invited all of the finance committee chairs to each of those meetings and they were able to partake in those budget conversations. And throughout the process, I consulted with our overseer surrounding the budget and the use of our school choice funds. The department's requests were compared to our projected revenues. We created our five-year average enrollment calculations and the assessments were created for the FY22 budget accordingly based on this budget that we have proposed this evening. Some of the things that you'll see reflected in this budget, this budget includes the move of the sixth grade class to PVRS for the fall of 2021. We are implementing a district-wide elementary ELA curriculum involving new textbooks and professional development for the staff that it relates to. Our administrative team had a collaborative budget effort and we were able to make some efficiencies in department requested budgets to offset some contractual increases and other changes in the budget. This budget does reflect no staff reductions as we have seen in the past. Um, you will see some changes in FTEs along the way through instructional assistance and so forth, but they were um, added in other areas such as special ed or a different school's instructional assistant line as well. The budget subcommittee and school committee reviewed all the lines and present a administration recommended budget totaling $14,851,290. The operating and debt portion of that is $14,842,613 and the capital portion is $8,677 for PVRS. This proposed budget <clears throat> is a budget increase of 3.44% following a 3.6% cut in FY21 in the spring. This budget represents a net increase of $494,354 from the FY21 amended budget back in the spring. The increase to the towns is $427,829, which is 4.82%. <clears> 
However, in looking at this budget, we looked back all the way to FY20, as well as the original voted budget in FY21. And these assessments that we're presenting to you this evening based on this budget are $36,891 less than our original FY21 budget had we not faced a pandemic, which is a negative 0.40% increase. And these town assessments are just $30,132 over what the towns were assessed back in FY20 for a cumulative 0.32% increase in the last three years. We did consider COVID's effect on unrestricted government aid to the towns when we pr prepared this budget. This is an overview of the expenditure budget. You guys were pr presented with last Friday the entire expenditure budget, and this is an overview, again, showing the total of the 14,851,290 with the increase of 494,354 in accordance with our 16 sections and the capital for PVRS. I'm gonna go down through the 16 categories quickly. You'll see a summary at the top of each page with the change from the prior year and some bullet points on um, what make up these changes, whether it's a positive or negative in this particular budget. So with athletics, the primary change here was in FY21, we were originally planning to subsidize athletic transportation with a surplus that had been accumulated of $56,000 in our user fee account. Since school closures did take place and we did not have the amount of athletic transportation that we were anticipating last year, we are actually able to carry over another $40,000 into FY22 to assist with that. So the difference is about a $16,000 increase. <clears throat> um, and moving forward, our user and gate fee analysis was completed. After this year, we will plan to continue to use the funds as follows. This will be continued to be evaluated as the sports programming changes at PVRS. Um, the plan is to have $10,000 a year from our user fees for uniforms and starting in FY23, $10,000 a year will be used to subsidize athletic transportation. That obviously will be looked at at the end of the year and FY22 based on the balance available in those funds. Our referees are level funded. Our coaches have been updated according to contractual obligations for our current coaching staff. There is a slight, slight decrease in the coaches simply because we did have some turnover in those coaching, um, in our coaching staff. And then the clinic and league fees, we did implement a scheduling software and that annual payment resumes. It had been paid for two years when it was implemented. So the payment on that will resume at $500 a year. And then we also got a user fee and registration software that was originally paid for from user fees in FY20 and FY21. This gets rid of our paper blue sheets and allows a more collaborative effort between the athletic director and the treasurer in turning over athletic user fees and a better reconciliation process that can happen and allows the parents to do it online. Central office, we have a decrease in our budget from FY21 of $80,980. The bulk of that decrease is obviously the portion of our bond that we paid off, which was $45,327. And that will continue to go down at that rate annually until that is paid off at the end of 10 years. The financial overseer decreased to $2,000 for the overseer recommendation based on his contract coming to an end in October of 2021. Our school committee expense has a slight audit increase in it and also includes the $3,500 fee to MASD for working with the school committee on the policy update that's currently happening. We've updated our special reserve contribution and debt service to meet the requirements of legislation. And we were lucky enough to lock in an interest rate of just 0.57% on our bond when we went out to bid on December 1st, which is significantly less than we had originally anticipated paying interest on this bond every year. So that was really good. Um, salaries have your contractual increases in them. Um, our dues and subscriptions, we reinstated the MASVO and MARS memberships that we did not take advantage of this year just because of everything going on. 
and not being actually able to attend in-person workshops. The financial clerk salary subsidy from the early childhood was removed um, for two reasons. One, because our early childhood revenues in this, you know, this year and the coming year are we're being very conservative, but we also have an early childhood director that is in place now that has taken over um, most of the early childhood um, function, excuse me, and Brenda is just doing the accounts payable and receivable for those. Our council fees, they slightly decreased every other year. We have a mid-cycle GASB evaluation, and then every other year obviously is a full one. So that fluctuates about $1,700 every other year based on that change. We decreased our school lunch subsidy to $10,000 based on our surplus projections. Um, and the original budget I had recommended taking that out completely, but we're keeping that surplus in there because we really don't know what's gonna happen with the school lunch program as far as participation once this waiver goes away, um, which we're expecting to end at the end of the school year. The food service director decreased also, um, typically about $21,000 of his salary is funded through the general fund budget. However, because we are anticipating a surplus this year, we have completely funded that in our school lunch program. Again, I mentioned our debt service principal includes the full outstanding bond, which is $362,619 right now. You'll see an offset for that in our revenues of the 317,292, which is the reissue next year, which decreases the overall bond outstanding by $45,327. All non-union salaries are budgeted at a 2% increase in this central office budget that are, don't already have contractual increases for a number of years. Moving on to our elementary administration. This one's a pretty easy one. Um, small changes here, $5,932. The administrative assistance were increased based on contractual obligations. And each of the admin assistants at both of our elementary schools had five days added to allow them to complete summer work obligations. Other salaries were increased either based on contractual obligations or a 2% increase if there is not a contract in place currently for the next fiscal year. The principal travel lines were decreased slightly to be in line with what's in the current contracts. And we moved the shared teacher travel to the elementary salaries category. So when you look at the full detail, you won't see that line in there anymore. Moving on to our elementary instructional assistance, this increased $67,476 from FY21. That takes into account at Burnison Elementary, a decrease, decrease sorry, of one full-time instructional assistant in the classroom and Northfield increased, and these were based on need of the classrooms that are gonna be in place next year. The instructional assistant salaries increased due to contractual obligations. And we also eliminated the offset for the two instructional assistants in the preschool classrooms because of the expected decrease in revenue next year um, due to COVID. Our early childhood revenue was based on a sliding scale fee, and we're expecting that we will have more families applying for a lower early childhood cost next year as a result of change in revenue during this particular school year. And then our Title I tutors that are fully offset with a grant, they used to sit in this in elementary instructional, or they used to be in special ed, and they have been moved into this particular budget. Again, they are zero dollar net effect, but you'll see the $82,760, oops, sorry, um, as a non-budget, that is what we received in Title I funding <clears throat> this year, and we expect to receive next year to provide those Title I tutors in our elementary schools. Moving on to our elementary salaries, there is a decrease here of $54,860. At Berniston, there is no change in the FTE because there is a need for a second fifth grade class. Northfield has a decrease in two FTEs and this relates to the sixth grade move. 
our specialist teacher salaries increase because we have our English language learner teacher that used to be housed in our special ed budget, but this has been moved respectively into both the elementary salaries and the PVRS salaries lines to take into account the FTE for that type of service that's needed at both schools. Again, contractual increases are built into this. In addition, we budgeted $10,000 at each school for staff turnover. Sorry, oftentimes when we have teachers retire or leave, we typically have um, decreases in their salaries, but we have run into situations where we have someone that might only have a bachelor's and they leave us and we have a candidate that is a master's or even master's plus 30. So we need to be um, budgeting some contingency for those staff turnovers that we've been experiencing. In addition, we do have in our teacher's contract currently funding for classroom moves and curriculum change moves. So at Berninston, we've budgeted for four classroom moves and one curriculum change based on anticipated changes that will happen next year. In Northfield, we have two classroom changes and one curriculum move. And the last change in the elementary salaries budget is the special ed nurse that does serve an elementary student is grant funded through a special ed grant. So that has been moved into the special ed budget for purposes of presentation and the um, non-budgeted grant offset. Moving on to elementary supplies, there's an increase here, $8,290. Our shared health supplies, which lies in this elementary supplies, was level funded. The textbooks increased significantly to complete our purchase of our new ELA curriculum. Do take, make note that a majority of the pilot for the ELA curriculum was funded either through rural aid or other grants this year to get that up and running. And the funding in the FY22 budget is the remainder of the textbooks to implement that program next year. Other supplies were adjusted according to need. Um, BES, they increased based on classroom and office needs. Northfield Elementary had a decrease due to not needing the Warwick Community School funds that were merged for supplies in the FY21 budget. And then the PE supplies that was a shared line has been consumed in the student supplies line because they are no longer shared. Each of our elementary schools has their own PE teacher. So those have been consumed in each respective school's student supplies lines. Moving on to facilities, we have a slight increase overall in facilities of $4,779. Our custodial salaries reflect increases due to contractual obligations. We did have a fuel rate increase. Last year, we were able to lock in at a really low rate of $1.25. This year, fuel obviously is on the rise, and we were able to lock in the first week of January at $1.61, roughly. Um, we moved our propane costs out of the facilities budget to the school lunch fund because all of the propane tanks that we have in place now are related to our cafeterias. And we also had some unused tanks at the high school that were removed and we got a credit for that um, unused propane this year. I did a analysis for our electric usage. I did based it on 12 months of current use and a 10% increase based on Eversource's projections. And I did adjust the kilowatt estimate um, up based on prior year's usage because obviously doing a 12 month analysis when the schools were closed was not sufficient. So there was a pretty lengthy analysis that I did in order to come up with our light and power. And we were able to see some more savings at the high school since some of the efficiencies that were made have been in place for an entire year now. Our water expense increased slightly because we are having sampling and testing done right now. And we base this on our FY21 rates that we're paying. The other items in this budget, maintenance of buildings, equipment, supplies, were adjusted in coordination with our facilities director based on the needs and the history at each building and expected rates for services moving forward. Insurance and benefits. We saw a decrease this year of $209,041. We had some decreases in rates that occurred that led us to that savings. 
our unemployment rate has finally dropped to back to a sustainable rate, which is great. When I came on board back in 2018, we had an unemployment rate of 0.9%, which is the highest unemployment rate available. And that was due to the number of layoffs that had happened in the prior two years. We have come down to 0.5 this year and 0.21 for calendar year 21. So that was a significant savings for us. And we expect that rate to stabilize moving forward into the future. We also saved another 94,000 roughly in our benefits for our employees and our retirees. Our Hampshire Trust Insurance Group locked in a premium change of negative 2% at their meeting on January 27th. They also locked in a negative 9% premium change on the dental insurance. And we are continuing to budget for six additional plans within that. Um, the estimate was done based on the individuals that are current work insured as of January 1st of this year. We did increase the school choice revenue offset in the health insurance. And I had spoke about this in the past and we had planned and anticipated to use the additional 127,000 in school choice that I had been reserving, knowing that our true up from GIC this year was going to move in that direction. I was able to lock in a rate of a maximum 6% increase on our other insurances for workers' comp and our liability. So those were both budgeted with that max 6%. If it comes in less, we would obviously see some savings. Moving on to professional development, there is a significant increase in this particular line for this year of 34,761. Partially because we reinstated professional development that we cut when we amended the budget back in the spring at FY21. We also have $15,000 worth of professional development in here for elementary as it relates to the ELA curriculum implementation. The principal's dues and subscription have been updated to be in compliance with their contractual obligations for the memberships and their current costs at this time. And our district-wide course reimbursements that's in the teacher's contract was adjusted according to the youth trend. This line was implemented just in this year's budget, and we were tracking how many courses were actually being taken by the teachers, as well as how many have been taken in prior years. So that was adjusted accordingly as well. Our district mentoring line, excuse me, <clears throat> also increased significantly, unfortunately, with the staff turner, ton, turnover that we experienced partially due to COVID, we have a higher number of new teachers coming in that will need um, full mentorship next year. So that was adjusted accordingly based on the need. And it also does include contingency for four potential new teachers joining the district next year. Again, budgeting for that turnover that is unforeseeable. PBRS administration has, has an increase of $21,436. This primarily pertains to the switch from a dean of students position being replaced with the assistant principal for a sixth grade move to PBRS, as well as 2% non-union increases that are budgeted. PBRS salaries has an increase of $424,225. Majority of this is obviously the shift from the elementary schools over to the high schools for the staffing for the sixth grade. Um, it does obviously include our contractual obligation increases for the teacher's contract and adjusted for the staff changes that have happened in FY21. The sixth grade move staff increases in this particular budget are a 5.1 FTE increase, which is four FTE for teachers, a 0.5 FTE for adjustment counselor, and 0.6 FTE additional PE. I didn't include the 0.5 for middle school art as part of the actual sixth grade move because this is a restoral of art for the entire middle school that has been missing in our curriculum for the last couple of years. In addition, we have a need for a one full-time equivalent English language learner at PVRS. The needs for our ELL students and those that have 
moved into our district this year has been assessed by our special ed director and the principals at each of the schools and with the student moving up students sorry that would be at pbrs next year whether they're moving up or currently in the school um, this is a need that needs to be filled both at the high school and the elementary next year and our nurse salary looks like it has a slight decrease and that's just because the nurses grant that we receive is covering more of salaries in the third year of the grant than some of the other things that it covered upon implementation moving down to supplies we have an increase here of fifteen thousand dollars the textbooks line was replenished to the level prior to the fy21 cuts and based on actual need we cut nine thousand dollars from the textbook line when we did our post-COVID budget cuts back in the spring, and we replenished 7,000 of it. And again, that was based on an analysis done by Kevin Burke, the principal at the high school. All of your other supplies were increased based on per student calculations for the move of the sixth grade up. It was estimated to be roughly $12,000 in supplies across all subject matters for consumable supplies for that class move. Other student activity increased based on our GCC registration classes. Currently, we pay for one course to be taken at the cost of $4,500. That did go up this year to $5,000. And a grant that Ariel was able to capture, the CTTP grant, working with community and technical partnerships, actually was able to cover another two classes this year. So in implementing that program from the grant and keeping with our partnership, we've increased this to two classes moving forward so our students have more opportunities to collaborate with Greenfield and take courses that we can't offer in-house. The education equipment had a decrease of $2,500. We typically budget for REDCAT systems for hearing impaired students. However, with the RTLE grant we captured, in FY21, we were able to buy a supply of those that will be able to be shared across the district um, to meet students' needs moving forward outside of the remote learning scenario. Our special education budget houses quite a few lines. Um, we do have an overall decrease in here of $28,837. There were some increases of teachers, one at PVRS that was related to the sixth grade move. And we also captured some savings based on some retirements. Our special needs administrator, there was funding that was moved for the travel over to the due subscriptions and travel to help offset pro professional subscriptions for our special education director. In addition, the special needs inclusion specialist, we added one full-time equivalent district-wide BCBA. This is being fully covered with our 240 grant that the funding level resumed to what it had been prior to FY21. We had a decrease from FY19 to 20 and that funding level resumed that's allowing us to cover this position that has been much needed um, in our district in the last couple of years. Our special needs instructional assistants, you can see that there's moves from the elementary level to PVRS, as well as getting our IAs in line that serve the Northfield Elementary School Hive program. We were trying to attach those to the school that was the student's base school, but we're going to keep those in the Northfield budget since that's where the Hive program is housed. We also added one special ed inclusion IA to service needs of students with IEPs that do not necessarily require a one-to-one -one aid, but do, oops, sorry, I bumped the button, but do require services. So that is being done at both of our, our elementary schools. And again, you can see at Northfield, the move of the IAs to pioneer for the sixth graders, as well as increasing an aid due to anticipated need. The high school instructional assistants, you'll see six FTE that is moving there from the elementary for that sixth grade move. Other salaries are being adjusted according to contractual obligations. And again, the 2% non-union increases for contracts that are not yet in the works. Special ed tuition and transportation, these were adjusted according to students that are aging out. 
as well as anticipated needs. And all the other expenses were adjusted to current needs. So there were some decreases in supplies that you'll see in the special education detail as well. And I worked really closely with the special ed director on those. Our technology budget, we're seeing a slight decrease of $14,271. Again, our salaries are based on contractual obligations and non-union increases. Our annual tech renewals for both the elementary and the high school have been adjusted according to the needs of the schools across the district. Um, Tyler works really closely with the principals at each of the schools and the staff to make sure that we have subscriptions in place that are being used and also trying to implement things that are the same across the district so that all of our teachers have access to the same tools and are using the same tools with all of our students. As far as the hardware goes, we had a decrease, obviously, with some of the funding that we received this year. We were able to um, speed up our one-to-one -one student device implementation. And our replacement plan moving forward is going to be to provide every new sixth grader with a device that will travel with them through high school. And then there'll be one new set also purchased at the elementary school. This will continue to allow us to have the replacements of technology be part of our operating budget rather than a capital or debt expense. And lastly, our rent and lease equipment. This is for our copiers in the district. These have been adjusted according to expiring leases, use costs, and location shifts that have happened with our equipment this year. Transportation, you see an increase here of 174,725. The bulk of that increase is the replacement of the offset that we had in the spring. We are not going to have $171,000 worth of revenue over our anticipated revenue this year as the state has decreased their reimbursement rate right now to 72%. With that, you'll notice there is a $15,000 offset in FY22 based on what we anticipate to receive over what we originally budgeted in the FY21 budget. That will be deposited into the RTRF fund again and used to offset next year's transportation, but not to the tune that we were able to last year. We do have a five-year contract with Cosmescus currently that has a 2.5% increase. Next year's daily bus rate is increasing $10.07 to $412.90, and we currently have 11 buses contracted with them. Every year we reallocate the actual expenditure to the elementary and PVRS based on the enrollment. And the other two areas of transportation that we're responsible for are for homeless and foster children. And those have been adjusted up according to the trends that we've been seeing in the last couple of years. And lastly, we have restored the elementary band transportation of $1,500 in hopes that we will have band and be able to do a spring concert again next year. Lastly, tuition, you'll see $111,000 increase here. This is based on our FY22 proposed budget. The choice out students, um, we do make adjustments based on the amount of graduating seniors. And our charter out is being based on 24 students at the new tuition of $24,000. You'll note that the increase here of $5,000 per student times the 22 students we currently or did have last year is why there's an increase of almost $100,000 in this particular budget because the state's charter tuition rate increased significantly in FY21. And our capital, which has been presented, is $8,677. It is just for flooring at PVRS for three classrooms that are listed there, Chorus, Room 118, and Room 208. And your summary for our total budget of $14,851,290, which is again an increase of $494,354 from our final FY21 voted budget. Tanya, so, can I oh, pause you for yeah, one second, please? Sure. Like we're having some technical difficulties. Robin oh, no. is trying to get into the meeting, and I'm not being prompted to allow her. I just tried sending her an invite. 
Uh, hi, Carson. This is Tyler. Uh, I'm noticing hi. on the meeting link that you are still not the organizer. It is still Joanne Wallace. Um, you may have to re leave and try leaving the meeting and rejoining, and it may make you the organizer. Okay, I'll do that right now. I did that twice already. Yeah, but that's, I'm not let sure. Let me try it again. Yeah. Yep. I apologize, everybody. Tanya, can you remove the uh, budget from the presentation from the screen? Yeah, I can. Do Thank that. you. Just until Kristen comes back, I'm assuming. Yes, unless you have more on that. Okay. I'm having a brain cramp. I don't remember us going through, uh, maybe we didn't. Um, we don't have to uh, take a roll call to start this because it's a public hearing, correct? Correct, it's just a presentation to the public. Yeah, I thought, yeah. thanks, I thought so. Kristen? Yes. I have Robin on my iPad. She's still trying. Okay. Do you know I have, I, what's going on? I don't know what's going on, and I've not received. I okay. just went out and came back in, and I'm still not receiving any notifications. Uh, I, Kristen, I, I texted Joanne. She's going to let her in or try to let her in. Okay. I went in both times, and it says that I've accepted the transfer of the meeting, so. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I Please tell her I'm really sorry. I'd, I'm not sure what's going on. She's Kristen? got a call, call on her phone. Okay. Kristen, one problem I experienced, this is David, um, I have three Google, Gmail accounts, and, and if I'm coming in on the wrong one, it gets all jammed up. So she should check and make if she has more than one Gmail account. And pi the Pioneer is branded Gmail. Okay. Um, she sh people should check that. Thank you, David, for that tidbit of information. Um, I see that she's joined. Robin, I'm sorry. I apologize. We're having some technical issues. So thank you for your patience and understanding. All right. I think that's everybody. Um, I'm sorry, Tanya. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No worries. I just paused the presentation for the time being. Oops. Let me get back down to where I was at. It didn't keep my place, so I apologize about that. If you guys are ready, I will go ahead and move forward. Um, these are just some summaries of our revenues going into this year. You see the increase in the assessments to the town, both in the capital assessments and the regular assessments, the 4.82% increase against the final FY21 budget that was voted. The, and I apologize, I just noticed I had a typo. That should, oops, that should say FY21. Um, and again, just showing the differences in each of our lines here. Our transportation aid is going up slightly because obviously our expense is increasing for this year, again, you know, compared to FY21. Our charter school reimbursement is going down slightly. Um, and again, that's just based on our FY22 governor's budget. The bond proceeds are decreasing based on one tenth of that bond. We did have a slight increase in tuition and fees. We have gone up from having um, 12 tuition Vernon students actually to 15, but I kept it at 14 to be conservative based on the students that are graduating. And then we have our excess and deficiency that we are using $200,000 of this year. And that has been discussed with the overseer as well for again, a total increase of 494, 354 on the revenue side, as well as the expense side. This is a breakdown of that capital assessment that I showed earlier, the flooring showing 
the amount for each of the towns. I did send out the calculation for this capital assessment based on the enrollment um, and how this is presented before our last budget subcommittee meeting. So the towns should have that as well, the finance committee chairs at least. The town assessments of 9,293,071 are broken down as such. Again, that was provided to the finance chairs before our last budget subcommittee meeting with the details of their enrollment and how that plays out between transportation, minimum local contribution, and their above minimum contribution. This is the breakout. If anybody has any questions, I can certainly go back to this. Um, but again, all the finance committee chairs were given this and it just shows the percentage by town of our four member towns with a comparison to last year by town and by type of assessment as well for the three parts that make it up. This is our five-year enrollment average. It's kind of a lengthy calculation. Um, but again, this is just the calculation that was used to come up with a percentage for how our assessments are allocated out to our member towns. And this is just kind of a summary of that. Burnison's worked out to be 36.41%. Lydens is 7.23%. Northfields is 47.43%. And Warwick's is 8.93%. Our state aid breakout with our chapter 70 transportation charter school and our Medicaid works out to be 4,802,950. And other revenues of 746,592 coming from tuition, interest income, our bond proceeds and the use of our excess and deficiency. For total revenues matching our expenses of $14,851,290. And that's it. Kristen, or do you want to open up for questions? Yes, I, I was okay. just going to say that okay. if there are questions and if um, folks could please use the raise your hand button. Tanya, though, it's a little hard for me to see with your screen up, but I'll do my I best. I was going to say, I'm going to go ahead and X out of this presentation. And if somebody needs me to go back to a particular slide that they want to see, I can reopen the presentation at that time. Sure. Thank you so much. David, I see that you have your hand up. I do. And what I want to say is I think that I should be the last school committee we hear, the committee member we hear for from for a while because this is a hearing. So this and the hearing is starting now. That was um, a presentation by the administration. Now we need to have a hearing and it's not really this is unlike a school committee meeting where it's uh, a meeting of the school committee. This is a hearing. Is there anyone that would like to speak or has questions? Go ahead, Robin. I see that you have your hand up. You're on mute. Could Tanya, could you just put the enrollment slide up again for me? Sure. Thank you. Give me just a second second to pull this back up. Make sure I'm presenting. Oops. Sorry, this PowerPoint is touchy. So <clears throat> this had the way that this is done, if you haven't seen it before, is each town, Burnison, Leiden, Northfield, and Warwick, is broken out between their enrollment at the elementary and their high school. And it's based on both December and October 1st enrollment, and then it's averaged. And then those averages are averaged over five years. 
And this is based on what's in our current regional agreement for the five-year enrollment average and the assessment percentages. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. If there are <clears throat> if there are other questions or statements or people that would like to speak, um, please feel free. Alan. You may be on mute. There we go. Yeah, I had noticed that there were some positions that were in before uh, on the elementary on the fifth grade move up that are not here now. I think one was technology and one was music. Um, so do we have a pretty good idea of how much the move up for the fifth grade costs are in this budget? The exact cost is $173,000 and I just submitted that actually to the overseer yesterday as he's working with Desi on the approval at this time. So does that include, um, you know, equipment and things like that? Because I thought it would be more toward the 230000 The 230000 included the positions that were removed in our last round. And the other thing that I discussed with Tyler Pless, who is our technology director, is it if we weren't buying that set of Chromebooks for the sixth graders, we would be buying a set at the elementary level. And that is part of our normal technology replacement plan that has been implemented to keep that from ending up being a capital cost in the district. So it's part of our revolving technology plan. So if they weren't moved up, that $15,000 for a set of Chromebooks would be spent at the elementary level next year instead of PBRS. All right, thank you. And what, what, um, expenses have been put in, uh, I hope, to help our uh, the 7th the and 8th grade. I know that there have been talk about how different things would help to, you know, provide things for 7th and 8th grade. Have we specifically marked either Chromebooks or things that we'd like the, or um, we'd like to be able to um, provide for our 7th and 8th graders next year? So the seventh graders will also get a set of new Chromebooks as they come in that will move up with them because they would have been, that would have been the only class coming into PBRS next year. And I think John can probably speak to this as well, but part of the benefits to the seventh and eighth graders is that they will have a specific middle school team of teachers that will be teaching them rather than having to share high school teachers with the middle school to cover some of the classes that are taking place right now. And they're getting okay, art back, which they haven't had. W would they get that back without the move up or they get that back because of the move up? So that cost is in that 173,000, but I did relay to Rick in my email to him that even if the sixth grade did not move up, that art being re-implemented, which was a cost of 27,000, really should not be removed from the budget if for some reason the state came back and didn't approve that move, which would bring that down to just under 150,000. Okay, thank you. Robin, I see your hand is up and Jeannie. No? Okay. Go ahead, Jeannie. How would someone from the public be able to ask a question given this is a Google Meet meeting? There was an invitation that was sent out with all of this access information. So, Finance Committee, and, um, everyone was sent, Joanne sent out the invitation to everyone with all of the information on how to log on. You're talking about select boards, finance committee, yes. those received invitations? Mm -hmm. Okay, but the general public, not 
some of them weren't invited is what I'm think feeling. The meeting is posted in the newspaper as a public document. Yeah, but I know in the past, our meetings, there have been members from the public at these meetings that had vital questions that they asked. And I was just wondering um, how that was addressed given our meeting format. I think when it was posted, they were instructed to email in if they wanted access to be able to speak during the meeting. Um, this is Ann. Is this meeting also being streamed on Facebook like all the other meetings? Yes, it is, Ann. Okay. I'm, that, I'm that, monitoring it as people, well to see if there's anyone that's posting anything um, as yeah. well. And because I've not that, seen any comments. Okay, thank you. That That is an opportunity for people to send you questions, correct? Yeah, yep. Yeah. If if there's public that can't come in or they have questions, um, typically I keep an eye on our, on the live stream when there are comments being made and I don't see anything thus far. Thank you for my technology updates tonight. You're welcome. Thank you, Jeannie. Anyone else? Are there any other questions? Um, statements, inquiries, revisit a page that Tanya presented. David, and then Raina. Yeah, I, I want to disclose what I said at the budget subcommittee meeting a couple days ago with respect to my uh, leadership at the vote on the budget, which will happen Thursday. Um, and that is that I intend to urge my fellow, fellow school committee members to vote the budget down because it requires a two thirds affirmative vote of the school committee to pass a budget. And we are at a six to six tie on the sixth grade move. Not much of an endorsement. Five of us could vote to vote the budget down and force change in direction for the coming year an institution of a process. So that was not mentioned, you know, in the context of the hearing. Um, so I, I just, I ought, ought to, excuse me. Sorry, David, I didn't know if you were done or not. I apologize. Um, there was a second part, um, but <laughs> yeah, I've lost it. But I did want to, I want to disclose that um, I will attempt to use that parliamentary maneuver um, because this whole thing has just seemed rush and rushed, inappropriate. Um, and I think that five of us voting no on the budget can send it back. We don't have the power, or we do have the power to you know influence policy and direction. Town meetings don't. Town meetings just to say get to say up or down on the vote, but a down on the vote here with the message that bring it back. And, and my position is that we should leave all the money in. I'm sensitive to the um, reality that we have less and less program to offer and, and other support. So I support the higher dollar amount, um, but it can't be for the six grade move this year and if five people join me uh we will i don't know if we have to have another hearing or not because it'll be the same dollar amount thank you thanks david um reina yeah um i apologize i'm having trouble with my camera so um that's why i'm not on video but um i just had a question about um the uh Bernardsdale Elementary, they, they're going to need two fifth grades. Are there not two fourth grades this year? There are, but there's also going to be two kindergarten classes next year as well. Okay. 
or so based on yeah, it's an overall intensive yes. okay. assessment that was done that gets done by the principals each year. I this is Dr. Carrier, the principal at Burners Elementary School. I'd just like to clarify that. Um, there's one fourth grade currently, but due to the high number of students that we have, if one more student moved in, um, and it's you know February of this school year, it's pretty concerning uh, to be able to support that high of a classroom number. It would be the highest in the district um, and has not been taking place yet um, to have that high of 26 students that um, in, in one classroom with what's been taking place um, with COVID and the additional concerns um, for the needs of the students in that class currently. Okay, thank you. I saw Julie's hand, then Karen. Um, I just wanted to respond. I, I, I want to thank Tanya and the budget subcommittee for all of their hard work on this budget. I know that it's incredibly difficult given the times that we're in. I think it's um, incredibly impressive that we have um, created a budget where there's no staff reductions. Um, that the assessments to the towns are less than the original FY21 budget, and that this would include a 0.32% increase in the last three years, which is remarkable. Um, and, you know, for all of us as taxpayers, I think that we should <laughs> feel quite relieved by that. Um, we've negotiated a lower bond rate, which has left us with a, with a lot of savings. Um, and, you know, um, I just attended a, a eight hours worth of school committee training by the MASC, which was absolutely wonderful and informative. There's a couple of messages that I received from those trainings. Um, some of it reiterated what I already felt, which is that we are here for the kids, that every decision we make needs to tie back to what is best for the children. And also that we must be a team. Um, if we are not a cohesive team, then we are not going to have the public confidence that is so crucial um, in order to make this a thriving, beautiful district that it once was and still can be. Um, we have voted now twice on the sixth grade move up. The first vote was seven to five in favor of the sixth grade move up. The second vote was six to six, which means that you um, go back in favor of the seven to five vote. We've done our due diligence there. We've heard from parents on both sides of the issue. And to hold the sixth grade move up, even if we, if, if you're saying that you want, you even agree to the budget amount, but just don't want to move the sixth grade up because of your own personal opinion about it, that's just going to further divide our committee. So I just want to urge everyone, the the message was incredibly clear from the MASC that you must move forward as a team when a vote is made and respect the committee as a whole. It's now been voted twice. And we and Tanya pre prepared this budget based on the fact that it's been voted twice. So we have a responsibility to mo move forward as a team no matter your your personal opinion in the matter. So I just, I would urge my fellow school committee members to um, on Thursday pass this well thought out budget that has really spelled out um, great news for the town and for the teachers and the staff who are all going to be getting their um, wage increases in a very, very turbulent year and uh, respect the work that's been done by our team thus far. Thank you. Karen, you are next. 
Um, I don't think I can do any more than Julie just articulated. I was thinking along many of the same lines. So thank you very much. But I would also like to uh, remind people that the budgeted amounts, if David is in favor of keeping them there, are based on improvements that would accru uh, accrue to three different grades, not two grades. And it would be much more difficult to justify some of those changes at the middle school if um, the sixth grade does not move up and it would not work as well. They would not have their own dedicated teachers. They would still be using high school teachers in the middle school. It wouldn't be much like a middle school. So again, we're, we were reminded, and I was at that training too for a refresher, that this is, we're thinking about the welfare of the students, all of the students. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. I see Mike's hand, Jeannie's hand, Alan's hand, David's hand. You would like me to go next, uh, Kristen? Yes, please. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank uh, the administrative team, uh, John Schedule, Tanya, uh, the principals, uh, specifically uh, Kevin Burke for working hard to uh, get the numbers and also with the other principals to uh, put forward a plan that improves education throughout the district. Uh, this isn't only about sixth grade. It's about the whole uh, academic community coming together and improving education as a whole. And I look forward to seeing um, kids thrive in this community once again with added uh, academic uh, skills that are going to be given to them. Uh, this is a long lasting uh, improvement that's uh, been long overdue. Uh, we we suffered a lot of teacher layoffs in the past, and finally we've come full circle to start providing some of the things that we had taken away. Uh, I just hope that the PVRS district community uh, families all join us and support this uh, move, which benefits everybody. And I do appreciate uh, Julie and Karen O'Neill's uh, words also. Uh, it goes a long way to show that um, we're moving forward, hopefully together. Thank you. You should tell I them about the vote maybe... of the of the budget subcommittee, Mike. You left that David, out. You're the chairman. David, for you. David, hold on one second, please. I want to make sure um, I'm watching our Facebook page, and there is a comment. Um, I'm not sure if this individual would like this comment to be stated or not but because i have been watching um the facebook page for commentary um there is a uh, an individual by the name of karen kulisanyeski and her comment is no matter in quotations personal opinion of our kids well-being question mark they can't thrive academically until they are thriving socially and emotionally so i uh, just wanted to reiterate that um next was Jeannie, then alan then david then robin Okay. Okay, I just wanted to remind everyone that grouping grades six, seven, and eight together is recommended by Desi, who has the curriculum for those students all linked together for grades six, seven, and eight. The only way you can accomplish that is by having those three grades in the same school together. Okay, Alan, then David, then Robin. Am I off mute? Yes, um, you are. All right, thanks. So there's no question we should be working together as a team, but we obviously are a divided team and um, at the moment. You know, when you say do what's best for students, I won't go back and list all of the educational reasons I've given for what I think is best for the students and why this is not the right time to be doing this. Um, at an earlier meeting, one of the committee members said uh, when we were talking about last minute 
um, things for notification for closing and opening, but that was unacceptable. We should be listening to the parents. Um, obviously, people do not feel that they've been included in the process. And I see this as an opportunity and a, and a really good defining moment for the committee to step back, do some good things for the seventh and eighth grade uh, kids to, to um, get them in a better position, include more so that people feel they were part of this process and, and with their support, and, and do this move uh, and postpone this for a year. Um, I don't agree with uh, we've had two votes because one of those votes, if it was, if the person had um, rescinded, it would not have passed. It would have also been a 6-6. Six, six. So that's important to keep in mind. Unfortunately, it reverts back to the 7-5. And the only way that that could change is if someone made a motion to postpone, which we have not had and, and anyone could make that motion. I also want to remind you know folks that having a vote on the budget and having it be a two thirds is is the reason for that in a regional school district is they really want the the not just the majority, but they want it very clear that the committee, all of the committee is endorsing you know the budget and and what is um, contained in the budget. So a two thirds vote is part of the budget process. And uh, you know, so we have an opportunity to look at things again and then make make a decision accordingly. Um, I think I'm not sure where I'm going with this in terms of when we come to the public hearing. I mean, when we come to the vote. Um, but I, if I'm following David's rationale, it sounds as um, as though he uh, is not in favor of the move up and would not support the budget because of because of that. Um, or not support line items that pertain to that, but it sounds like he still would like to see some impact on the seventh and eighth grade. If that's the case, and I don't know if this is possible, um, some of that money or half of that money could be utilized to implement that move, and another portion could be either set aside or flow into E and D, or however uh, Tanya thinks that that mechanism would work to support a, a plan to, um, to, to go forward and do the things that you're talking about. And um, my, my final point is, um, I forget my final point. Uh, give me one second. Um, ha having, Having this, having a a four or five year projection, which I haven't seen, um, would be really really helpful because we are um, using um, different funds to help support this and and have the increase to be as minimal as possible, and uh, it would be a much clearer picture unless it's there and I don't understand it, where we go forward in the next four years and do our estimates of what we think we're going to have revenue so that we don't we don't uh, deplete um, to the point where then we'd have to have a bump and, and uh, a significant increase. So um, I guess that's something for Tanya later to be thinking about, or it would be nice to see how that projected out. I applaud the efforts for what the administration has been able to do for this upcoming year, but I'm, I'm cautious about how that plays out in 2023, 24, 25. So thank you, um, Kristen, and thank you for the members for listening. Thank you. Tanya, do you want to speak to that five-year projection? Yes, I actually want to speak to the five-year projection and the fact of using other funds. So this final budget, Alan, does not include use of funds from any other source other than the general fund budget for the sixth grade move up all of the school choice monies that were originally proposed to be used to offset the cost and mitigate the increase to the towns have been removed on the recommendation of the overseer. And I actually <clears throat> have a five-year projection prepared that's in front of the superintendent and the school committee chair at this point to move forward to um, either present at a school committee meeting or another meeting in the near future, but it does need to be reviewed and discussed before it can be made a public document. 
So, so does that mean, Tanya, that um, we're assuming that uh, we're getting, or let's see, how do I word this? We won't have a loss in revenue due to any parents that don't have their kids move up from fifth grade into middle school? Are we sort of assuming that they're all going and we won't lose revenue? We there would we would not lose any revenue from the state. We are a we're a hold harmless district. So if we have students that leave the district because they don't want to move to the high school for sixth grade, that does not affect our chapter 70. Thank you, Tanya. David, and then Robin uh, and it, Michelle. It, it, Kristen, it, it would if their school choice and we have that as a deduction under a school choice um, uh, decision. And I will mute myself now. So I think we went from 20 school choice in Warwick to a total of six in Northfield this year. Um, I wanted to point out, because our budget subcommittee chairman failed to, um, and this is uh, germane to the concern for consensus, um, six to six school committee on an issue is no mandate. And the way we come into this being an affirmative vote in favor of sixth grade, um, you know, is really winning on a technicality. So I'm proposing to defeat this on a technicality, that five no votes um, will defeat the budget and we'll get back to it and, and understand that this is at minimum delayed. Uh, but what the budget subcommittee chairman failed to mention is that the meeting Tuesday night, the committee, the budget subcommittee voted to recommend delaying the sixth grade move. So, so, you know, that's, that's where the budget subcommittee is. Um, closing Warwick took three tries though, before we got it right folks. And uh, the last thing I'll, I wanna say is that we never voted to adopt the middle school model. So it's kind of like uh, we're taking this up as a budgetary thing, like the Senate with budget reconciliation. But doing this is a, a, both a policy violation. We don't have the policies to support this middle school thing. And it's a violation of our district agreement. Our district agreement calls for elementary schools through sixth grade. It's part of our district agreement. So five no's and we can delay this. And I think our community will give a sigh of relief. I'm not interested in five-year projections. I'm willing to put the money on the table uh, to serve kids. I'm not willing, because I do not think it's in the interest of many kids to do this. And so I'll be voting no on this budget. Robin? Okay, so I tried to write this down so I'd be concise. I don't know why I have an echo. Are you hearing that? Yeah, it's because you're uh, you're logged in twice. Should I just turn myself off up here? Um, if you can, uh -huh. let's try that. All right. If you lose me, I'll be gone forever. See if you can turn the volume down on on one device because it might cut you. It might hang up on both. If it's How's that? Well, I see her twice. Is that better? Robin, I see you twice. No. Can you, you move down on that? Hold on. Alan, Hello? please, if everyone can just stop with the comments, we can figure this out. Robin, Hello? go right ahead. Hello? Hello? You know what? Let me fool. Does somebody else want to go and I'll fool around with this and try to get myself out of one of these? Sure. Michelle, you are next. Karen, then Mike, and then Jim. Michelle, were you going to go?
because sorry, okay. I, I thought you said Karen. Okay, no, you Michelle. All right. As a member of the budget subcommittee, I want to thank everyone who worked very hard on these budgets, all the principals, department heads. I attended every budget um, subcommittee and I listened very thoughtfully. Um, but we as a school committee have not discussed the goals. And what I've heard is our budget should be tied towards the goals. And I would urge the school committee to spend some time to make goals for the next three years, at least the next year. And I am very, very concerned about doing year to year budgets because we have not thoughtfully thought out how to educate all our children for the future. And that is why I think we need to look at the future, not just this year. It did take this school many years to get into the negative. And if we want to make sure to continue to grow the positive for our children, we have to have goals that we can hold ourselves accountable to. And therefore, I am urging everyone to ask the difficult questions about the sixth grade move. Now, when we heard from the presentation that we needed four to five new positions for the sixth grade move up, and I heard a presentation that took out two positions and we're down to three, I was very concerned about that. And no one has asked that tonight. How come we're not committed to the four to five new positions that the parents asked us to? I mean, so we as a school committee, yes, have to work as a team, but we have to have goals that we all can work with. And I am urging my fellow school committee members to make sure that we are working on that for the next few years. I think. Go ahead, Robin. I'm going to try. If anybody okay. wants to remove me, want to be try. Go ahead and do it. I cannot because I do not hold access to the meeting. Joanne still has it, so why don't you go ahead and try, okay. Robin? And okay. So I just want to say that parents should, and they have advocated for their own children's needs. Um, I have actually done that in the past, and I've actually had to make decisions um, based on the what I thought was best for my children. I don't want to tell them that um, their input was heard and it's important, but we also heard from parents who thought that moving up was a good thing and we are leaving not those people out um, by not mentioning them. I also attended the same um, training and I do, one thing that I took away from that meeting was the term disagree and commit. And I do feel as um, some of my other members have mentioned that we have voted on this. And that at this point, if we used all of this energy to make this transition the best ever for these children in all three of the grades, the six, seven, eight, that that would be the best thing for us to show that we can do this. And it seems like they're, um, the staff is committed to it. They've been thinking about it for a while. And I feel, I just feel like, Anyway, that's that. So the other question I had really quick was the budget subcommittee voted to approve the budget is what um, we're being told, but they recommended that you don't move the sixth grade. Well, how did you approve a budget if part of that budget was moving the sixth grade? I'm a little confused about that. Thanks. Mike, would you like to answer those questions as the budget subcommittee chair? Yes, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, first off, uh, 
as this being a public hearing, I didn't think I was going to be on the agenda as the chair of the budget subcommittee, like a school committee, but I will answer the questions. Uh, we did have a vote that approved the budget that passed unanimously with three people, David, uh, Michelle, and myself. Uh, with that being said, uh, further discussion was had and uh, David, as he had spelled out earlier about uh, not wanting to pass the budget and some other things, he then made a motion to uh, recommend delay sixth grade uh, with the original budget that had passed earlier in the meeting. I had said that our job is not to delay sixth grade multiple times. Uh, the school committee as a whole directed us to come back with a budget with the sixth grade move up. We were not told to come back with a budget with a delay. Um, so the, as, as I have in my notes in the minutes that will be sent out either, I think they probably already got sent out for the school committee meeting maybe, um, is that our, our job as a budget subcommittee is to take care of the budget as it was asked of us to do from the full committee delaying having a motion and a vote to delay is out of the scope of the budget subcommittee because that's not what we were directed to do um, i did go into masc's rules a subcommittee cannot create change or direction without consent from the full committee so um i'm not going to go out on a limb I mean, we can discuss that at the school committee meeting, but I can't make a change in the path we're taking without consent from the full school committee. That's not that's not what our subcommittee is about. Our subcommittee was directed to uh, present a budget, prepare a budget based on sixth grade moving, and that's what the administrative team did uh, with the superintendent, the principals. And, and the curriculum coordinator and Tanya Gaylord, along with the uh, budget subcommittee uh, reviewing it with Tanya and uh, passing that budget. So the budget did pass. The only issue I had with the motion for delay is that is out, that was out of the scope of our jurisdiction because we weren't given consent by the whole committee to do so. And uh, lastly, <laughs> the district agreement uh, section three, section three B, was canceled due to uh, acts of 2018 session law. The district uh, of the the state um, loan. So uh, I've also asked that we put that sessions law of 2018 up on the school's website here, hopefully in the near future, so people can understand what the whole committee is dealing with, and the new committee members can see what. The parameters are that we have to follow uh, under the state rules regarding that deficit borrowing. Thank you. Thank you. So I just want to take a quick pause, please, because there is some public comment on the Facebook page, on a different Facebook page um, that I had to switch over to. And I want to make sure um, that that is acknowledged and uh, spoken. So uh, Caitlin Sheridan, and, and I do apologize if I pronounce anyone's names incorrectly. Um, but I do want to state who's saying it. Um, Caitlin Sheridan is asking, well, will there be a technology class in the sixth grade? Um, Amy Boyden, yet you have already cut positions intended for this move. Question mark. Yes. Question mark. Music and one other. I totally agree. This is not the right time. So much of this decision is a mystical theory or dream that fails to take into account or our current pandemic and student needs with these conditions. Caitlin Sheridan then asked, what if school choice, what if student school choice out? Does that cost money? Um, Jane Dutcher has asked, won't you have to pay school choice or tuition for students who leave the district? Amy Boyd in stated theory would be great. Have you actually asked the staff in an anonymous survey? Um, I heard energy mentioned by Robin. Have you talked to teachers lately? And that is all I see at this time. Um, so next, uh, Karen, Allen, David. Hi. Um, I'd like to address 
a comment made earlier that we would have to go through a policy committee meeting to subcommittee meeting to adopt a middle school model. We had a middle school model. It disappeared when a lot of staff left the district and there were cuts. Um, and what we lost was team teaching. Um, and it just has not been possible since some of the seventh and eighth grade classes are now taught by high school teachers. They don't have the close knit collaboration they had at one time. And moving up the sixth grade would help restore that middle school model. Um, and I know that some of it also has to do with uh, extra opportunities like art that could be restored. They were part of the middle school model. A rotational system um, with many more options was part of a middle school model. It's not that we ever voted to go away from it. It went away because we couldn't fund it. Thank you. Alan, then David and Jim. And um, I, there's another comment here from a David Pontius. How can a few months be considered? A lot of thought going into this decision and plan, question mark. The administration has so many other pressing needs to address across the entire student population. I'm sorry they were made to work on this budget at this time. Um, there's also a comment about uh, needing a Facebook page to access this public meeting. Um, there are other means to access this meeting and it was posted on our page when they did the posting notice. Um, there's a telephone number. There's also um, a link to the Google Meets where folks were invited to. So there are multiple means for individuals to access this as a public hearing. And we try to meet the needs of everyone. Um, so I did want to uh, clarify that. Alan, David, Jim. Yeah, um, Kristen, I'm, I'm thinking of my own comments that I made and I'm, I'm listening to the comments of everyone else. And I'm feeling that we actually moved away from, you know, asking questions specifically to the budget. And we're going back and deliberating something that we've deliberated before, which would be better served when we move on the, on the, on, on Thursday. I, I'm starting to feel like we're, we're really starting to deliberate and we shouldn't be debating this now. There's That's so many good things that people are saying, but I don't think this is the time. I wanted to suggest that when you read some of the comments that the parents had called in, it might be more uh, toward the hearing piece if you if you took the ones that were questions and then asked uh, John or, or Tanya to or whomever would be in the best position to do that to to just answer the the question that the parents have and then and then it would probably naturally shift back to more of a we had a presentation and now we're just answer, you know asking questions and answering them and defer this until Thursday. I agree, Alan. I, I, I think we do. This is uh, more deliberation um, and we do need to get back to the public hearing forum. Um, and I just want to be clear because this has been debated multiple times. I just went and revisited my notes from our meeting. The original vote that we did take for sixth grade just to make sure it's uh, according to how it was documented. The first vote was a seven to five vote for sixth grade. The second vote that was taken, a motion to rescind the vote was taken and it was a six six, which failed, reverting back to the original vote. It was not a second vote. It was a motion made to rescind the vote. Um, so I would like to get back and see if some of these questions could be answered um, by administration if possible, but I do see some folks hands still up. David, Jim, Robin. <laughs> You're on mute, David. I see you. I don't hear you. I only see you. You see my lips moving. Um, a hearing really is for hearing. It's not for answering questions. The PowerPoint presentations and answers to people in the audience, it's really hearing from the public. And there hasn't been too much of that that I think, I don't think we're spending our time unwisely. If you've looked at that agenda, um, it's it's massive, and 
So I think, you know, every time somebody raises their hand from the public, we should hear from them. I don't think we should preach to them, the administration. I don't think it's a bad idea for the school committee to have this discussion. I considered the whole sixth grade move thing a Trojan horse. I had no idea it was in such a uh, flower. And, you know, we're playing a game here calling for, not a game, but what we're calling for unanimity and, and, but on a 6 6 vote, please, you won on a technicality. Now I can defeat the sixth grade move with five fellow school committee members voting no on this budget and sending it back. That's what we need to do. Tanya, if could you clarify the process, please, or the steps of what happens? Um, so that everyone is aware, if this budget does not pass, what then happens? So if the budget does not pass, we then have to go back to the budget subcommittee. We will be in violation of our regional agreement, which states the school committee has to pass a budget by February 15th. And the school committee would have to decide what they want to do with the budget moving forward and take some sort of vote related to that because the budget subcommittee can only prepare and the administration can only prepare a budget based on the decisions that have been made by the school committee. So until something else were to happen from the school committee, there would be no amendments to be made on the budget until something were to happen. Thank you. Or until the state, if the state for some reason said no to the sixth grade, but Thank you. I appreciate that. Jim, you're next. Yeah, thank you. And, uh, you know, thanks to everybody that's put this together. So I agree with you, Alan. Mark, Mark the state. Just kidding. Um, so we started um, with David saying, I'm the last person on the school committee who should be talking because it's a public hearing. And so I really appreciate the irony because very next, um, you took us hostage, David. And we are, and, and I, I understand that, that you like playing that role. Um, we are divided and we could talk on this subject, which we're good at for the next three or four hours but I don't think anybody would change their mind. I think everybody has said what they have to say. What concerns me the most is what a lot of people have said. We're here for the kids. I certainly am. I've been at Pioneer 25 years and I love being here, but we have to do something about the fact that we're divided because it makes for a very dysfunctional group. And so um, I'll leave it there, but thank you to everyone. Thank you, Jim. I'm wondering if some of the questions that um, I read aloud could be answered. There was one about, will there be a technology class? Um, if there was a survey conducted to the teachers? Hey, Chris and I'll uh, let Kevin Burke, he's on. He was gonna answer some of these specific questions. Thank you, John. Yeah. What was the the first question was the technology class. Yes, Kristen. if there was going to be a technology class in the sixth grade. Um, so when I presented initially, um, obviously we had an ideal versus what we could um, move forward with. We could still have a technology class in the sixth grade, um, but it would probably end up taking away an engineering and design class in seventh grade. Um, so we would have technology in sixth and seventh and engineering and design would start in eighth. Thank you. Um, it, there was another question that said um, that we have already cut positions intended for this move, question mark, M yes, question mark, music and one other. So um, that was in addition to make our um, point six music teacher a full-time music teacher. Um, 
we would have to be creative to provide sixth grade with music. Um, I would need to have a conversation um, with the music teacher to figure out what that would actually look like. Um, to be honest, with the last conversations and the conversations that have gone on, um, it's been kind of, once again, pushing pause and moving forward. Um, so I'm hoping on Thursday we have a final decision um, and we're moving forward or we're not moving forward um, and we can start this process or not. Thank you, Kevin. Um, there was a question about if the staff were um, provided a survey. Um, I, I had conversations with um, the sixth grade, the seventh and eighth grade teachers and the sixth grade. So I had meetings um, where they had direct feedback. Um, I didn't have a survey, but we had meetings and we had conversations about the move and what was needed and, and what would work. And Chris, and I'd like to add that everybody was surveyed uh, last year. We sent out a survey district wide and staff, students and uh, families were surveyed at that time. Thank you, John. Thank you, Kevin. Um, I am looking to see. Uh, hold on. I'm sorry, my internet is delaying. Um, there was a question. How can a few months be considered a lot of thought going into this decision and plan? The administration has so many other more pressing needs to address across the entire student population. I'm sorry that they were made to uh, work on this budget at this time. Um, so I'm not sure how can a few months be considered a lot of thought going into this decision and plan. I'm not sure, John, or um, if you'd like to answer that or try and answer it. I guess I say the discussion about sixth grade, I believe started in 2018 uh, with the school committee. So it, it's been um, more than a few months discussed. Um, and, uh, you know, I know there was a stakeholder group put together that Kevin Burke um, led and, and then kind of uh, you got put on pause with COVID and then you called that group together again. Um, so yeah, it's a lot of work. Um, it's a lot of planning. Um, that's our job and we're happy to do it. We want to see the district move forward. Um, and uh, we think we can do it positively and, uh, and you know, make the transition smooth. Thank you, John. I don't see any more questions. Um, in, in any of the live feeds um, that I'm trying to follow, there are two. There's one for PVRS and one for BNC TV. I want to remind folks that if you wanted to speak, you could have been invited. You needed to email um, Joanne or the Citizens Comments email, and she would have provided you the email invitation to this Google Meets platform. You could also call in by telephone um, or use uh, the Facebook um, streaming. So just a reminder to everyone, those were the three options. I know this year is a little tricky um, as a result of COVID and having to use the Google Meets platform to try and host a public hearing, but it is the only way that we could do that at this time. Um, so I just wanted to provide clarity around that. I know these are different times, not that, um, not the process that we would have typically followed at Pioneer and, and had the um, auditorium open for everyone to come, but uh, this is how we've had to do it this year as a result. So if there are no other questions or comments, um, I would conclude our public hearing for this evening. Jim, I see you have your hand up. All right, okay. There's nothing else. Um, that will conclude our public hearing. It is 8.44 p.m. Thank you everyone for your patience, your understanding, um, and moving through this process.
Have a good Thank day. Thank you.